just got this in the mail. This is the Top Dawn TC005. It's a thermal imager and it has regular infrared and visible. So it's a dual camera. And I'll show you what that is. The TC004 only has the infrared and I went with this one for a couple of reasons and that is mostly the reason. Um, but let me just unbox this. I just got it. So I'm unboxing it here with you now as I rip the box open like a, a villain here. Nicely packaged. This is the holster, I guess, if you have it on a tool belt. This is nice because you do want to make sure that you're mindful about keeping the lens from getting scratched. Uh, so it has a nice little holster, obviously Velcro, because who doesn't like that satisfying noise? It has a little strap on there, so you can either use it as a shoulder holster or you can put it through a belt loop, just like you would on a tool belt or on your regular belt. It has this real thick user manual, which I'm, I'm waiting for someone to make a flip book in one of these and actually make people flip through it because that'd be cool. Uh, it just has multiple languages. This is the calibration certificate. So someone calibrated this, which is good to know, I guess, if you're into that kind of high level of detail. This is a couple of extra pieces that come with it. Let's tear into this bag here. Let's see what we got here. This looks like the all of the different country codes, because this is a global product provider. So they send you all of these, which is kind of handy if you're a world traveler, but for the average user, they'll probably never use all of these. That's for the charging brick itself, so that you can use country specific plugs. Comes with their own SD card, so it gives you 16 gigabytes. This is a USB-C to standard USB. And that's helpful because it is a USB-C device. And actually that's one of the really cool features about this tool is that it actually has the ability to screen share. So you can actually, similar to if you have a Samsung phone and you're using DeX or something where you export the image from the device to another device. So it's basically like the Thunderbolt port for all you Macintosh users, I suppose. Uh, and then these, you can see how those go in there. This just has those teeth that kind of go into those little locking spots. So let's put it in at the rotated angle that it's asking for. And then once it's in there, it clicks. Now I'm in a mirror. Look at that. That's a little charge brick. So this is actually kind of handy because if you're ever traveling, you could take this with you overseas. And this turns a USB charger into any international plug. So it's actually super handy. So if you ever were going to somewhere overseas, that would be helpful. Really nice packaging for the foam end of it. And here is the camera itself. Super simple handheld camera. Uh, this is meant for one hand action. It still has the screen film protector on there. Um, and I won't tear that off because I'm running one handed here. And this is it loading up. And you'll see this is me unboxing it. Like I said, this is, I just opened it. So you get to see the speed of how this does this. It's initializing the system and you can see immediately it's already in, oh, I'll pick my language. Let's say English. Oh, good grief. I don't know the year, 2024. I believe today is June. So that's the sixth month. And I believe today's the 20th, but 21st. I actually swiped down on my phone to see the date and that actually dismissed the video recording. So that was annoying. And the hour, uh, actually, to, so it's 5.52. This is in what would be known as military time here in the US or time for the rest of the world who uses clocks. Um, so if you just add 12, if you're not familiar with that, let's call it 53. So it sets the time and bam, look at that. So you can see the green dot and the red dot as I move into an area, those are picking the hot and cold point on those surfaces. So this is just showing me how heat or the infrared is bouncing off of those surfaces. And you can actually see that is a super clear image. I'm going to zoom right into that so you can see how clear that is. But man, that is a beautiful image. Now let's try something that would probably be a little bit hotter. Let's get into this electrical panel see what we got whoa look at that there's some heat happening over there so that lets me know I probably should be looking at that side of the panel something's going on over there compared to the rest of the panel so maybe I'll investigate that but this is 
part of the reason that I got this. I want to be able to investigate these anomalies in my electric panels, and I want to be able to identify solar cells that might have gone bad, and this is the easy way to do it, as well as check on your HVAC and anything else that uses thermal infrared. And this has a couple of extra functions where I don't know the exacts of it. I know it can record video, it can take still images, and you can also interlay or kind of transition between I don't know if I can do it with this. This is amplification, so it has zooming, which is actually really cool. But there's the ability to, ooh, let's go back down to one. You can go in between um, the actual live image versus the um, thermal image. So you can blend the two together. So if you're in a situation where you're looking at something and you can't quite tell what is the glowing object, you can then key in the thermal infrared layer to be transparently exposed through the actual layer, which is really neat. So this is going to be able to, and there it is, it's dying on the glass because infrared doesn't work through glass. You get reflectance, which is interesting too. But we'll do a bunch more videos on this so you can see all of the cool features and how this type of tool can help for those DIY projects that you might be taking on. But pretty cool product overall. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, I did a bunch of research on which ones I wanted, and this one had all of the features that I thought would be appropriate for the types of things that I do, and it's small, portable. It also has a tripod hold, so you can actually put this on a tripod, and through the USB-C, you can broadcast this to another device. So if you have a screen, you can bring it to that, and you can directly connect to your computer or save images onto the SD card, which they provide and be able to save your images. So if you need to have any uh, record of how hot something is, it'll tell you. And in current mode, it is picking the green point, which is that green X on the screen there, which is showing you the coldest. And there's a red X up in that upper left corner there. It's hopping all around, and that is the hottest object that it sees. So it's always telling you what those are, and then the temperature on max and min are those two temperatures. It's currently set to Celsius, but you can set it to Fahrenheit, obviously. Um, which I will, and I'll go over some of those features in a later video, and I'll be using it so you'll get to see what it's all about. But that's it. Top Don, TC005. Just because I'm playing with it here, you can choose the different modes. So you can fuse the two images so it's a real live image with thermal overlaid, and that's kind of cool. It looks really three-dimensional in that case, which is really interesting compared to the flatter version of what IR looks like. You can also go to PIP, which is picture in picture. So you'll see the exterior helps you guide and be aware of what you're looking at before it pans into this. And then you can see the thermal readings around that center square or rectangle, I guess, uh, to show you what you're looking at. Then there's a mix. So this is the two kind of superimposed. This is just visible. So this is just a regular camera. Look at that. You can take pictures if you wanted. And then this is the alignment, so you can adjust the two together, and this is just infrared. So it's a really cool setup of the way you can dynamically pick the way that you're seeing the image. I actually like the fuse, I think, probably the best, because you can actually see how the text for DeWalt is on those chisels. But when you go to just infrared, that text isn't any different in temperature. So you can't read anything. But with the two of them together, you can still see the thermal values, and you can see the text on objects. And that could be very helpful if you're reading, for instance, that we'll go look at that same exact example we looked at before. So now you can actually see the fuses that are hot on that side. You can actually see which ones those are. And if I hold that white point over it, it's telling me what that reading is on that center point. And that hot point is the red one, which is capturing. And if I slide the white one, which is the center over to it, that upper value on the top left is telling me what that is. So again, super handy for identifying things like that. And actually, I just parked the truck in the garage, so this will be interesting to see how hot that is. Wild to see. The doors of the truck are completely ice cold, but these front panels are blazing hot. This is way hotter than that electric panel. We go up to the hood and let's see how hot that gets. It's, uh, it's about the same, actually. The sides of the truck are actually exhausting more because the heat is coming off the sides here. So pretty neat that you can see all that. You can also see how hot the tires and the wheel well, the brakes get. It's pretty neat to see 
what is actually hot. You know, I'm moving a little bit faster than its refresh rate, so it's acting a little wild. It's also interesting that you can see that this red on the bed is different than the doors, and I suspect that's because the doors are probably made out of aluminum rather than the steel that the bed's made out of. And you can tell those RAM boxes are plastic because they are also colder, but that's something you wouldn't be able to see with the naked eye because obviously you can see with my phone that that doesn't change at all. But when you look at it through thermal, you can definitely see that those doors are made out of a different material that is dissipating heat in a different way. So again, just super cool tech. If you're a DIYer, something like this can be super useful for all sorts of different things. And uh, like I said, check out the link in the description if you're interested.